Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. I specialize in games that can be played in 20 minutes or less, and this is my list for top five family games. These are great options to give as gifts because they should be a hit in any household. So let's get started. First up, we have Dixit Disney Edition. Basically, this is very similar to the game like Apples to Apples, but it is more of a storytelling game. If you have a hand, you have a handful of cards and you're picking one to place down and you have a word or two to describe it. So you might say, oh, this is magical. And then everybody else who's playing gets to pick a card out of their hand that they also think could maybe be described as magical. And you place them all out, mix them up, you flip them over, and they are trying to guess which card you placed out there. And so it's really simple. Uh, they get points if they guess the correct card, and uh, they also get points if people guess their card and that they placed out instead of the card you, the clue giver, gave out. And so that's all you do. You take turns. You have just a little bit of creative control, and it's really simple but fun to play. This is one of those games that uh, my four-year-old can successfully play with us as a family and do really well with just a little bit of help. Uh, but it's great for an adult game night as well. So there's just a wide range that can do well this game. And you know it's a good game when the main complaint you hear about it is that there aren't enough cards and that you end up going through all of them. Uh, and so the solution, happily, is there are many more versions of Dixit out there. There's the standard edition, there's a bunch of expansion decks. So if you get this game and you end up loving it, which you will, then you just have so many more options available to you. And it's just really exciting that they came out with a Disney theme. Theme really matters. And that is just a big draw to get a lot of people excited to play this game. Next up, we have Timeline Twist, which is the new version of Timeline, but it's as cooperative. Uh, in this game, unlike standard Timeline, where you just have a hand of cards and you're trying to place them out, and get them in order and get rid of all of your cards first and then hooray you've won the game. Uh, in this, you are trying to, as a group, play your, all of your cards out in this lineup, but the trick is you can't play in between any of the cards that have already been placed out. You have to play on the far left and the far right of the line of cards you have. So in regular timeline, if you play enough, people get a lot of the cards memorized, and then it's not fun. You're just, okay, plunking them out in the right spot. Okay, I knew all of the dates. I won the game. In this, it, it helps if you learn more of the dates. The game becomes more fun the more you play it because you're going to be more successful, but there still is a bit of an art and challenge to being able to line them up just right. Uh, because if you have something where you have a play a card down, that is the beginning of the Hundred Years' War, which is in 1337, I know that thanks to this game, and you play that down next to a card that's the invention of the teddy bear, that's 1905, uh, you now have to play cards later than 1905 or before 1337. Uh, there's spot, they have one like a bonus row above where you can make like a secondary timeline, but you can only put one card in between the two cards that were in the standard timeline. So you could put up there the um, invention of cornflakes, which is in 1898, but then you can't put anything in the 1600s. There's a lot of the um, scientific, scientific discoveries in there, and um, those would just have to be discarded, which there's an art to as well. So it really feels like it took timeline and upped it to a full-fledged uh, board game, which is just really fun. It made it so I've been testing this out with my husband and my kids, and especially for my kids, it's been wonderful because it's a way to learn about history together and get some of these dates down, but it's just in a really positive team environment, and they just wanna play over and over again because as they get the dates down, we're doing better at the game. So it's really great to have a cooperative game in the mix that you can play as a family. This is just a great theme and really quick and fun to learn. And they have two versions. They have um, Timeline Twist Standard and they also have one for pop culture and both are very fun. Next up, we have Super Mega Lucky Box, which came out a couple years ago, but it's one of those games that we just keep on playing over and over and on repeat. And it's what the longer that we have it, the more I appreciate it. It is essentially strategic bingo. That's all the game is. And it's really quick and easy to start playing. 
You flip over a card with a number on it, and then you get to mark off one of that number anywhere on one of your sheets you have in front of you. That's the game. But really fun things start happening as you're marking off numbers. If you complete a row or a column, you get a nice little bonus and it might be marking off, you might get a number that you get to mark off on another spot. You might get um, a star, which if you get a few of those, you get a bunch of bonus points on that round. You might get a moon, which matters for the end of the game. Whoever has the most gets some extra points. If you don't, if you have the least, then you lose a few points. Uh, you might get lightnings, which are awesome because if somebody, if they flip over like a seven and you'd rather have that be a nine, you can pay a couple lightnings and make it be a nine for yourself. And the bonuses, sometimes you mark off a bonus and then you get to mark off another spot and that triggers another bonus, which triggers another bonus. So you're just like, hold up everybody. I'm going crazy on these bonuses. It is very satisfying to play. You feel very accomplished at the end uh, because you feel like you've accomplished a bunch of things by checking off those boxes. And it's just one of those games that is so simple and easy to learn the basics, but you have enough interesting decisions that you make as you play that just every time you play, it is a very satisfying experience. It's one of those games where I would happily play it every Friday night for ages and ages, and you just don't get tired of it because it is just such a solid choice. Next up, we have Take 5, or 6 Nymphed in the original German. Uh, this is not a newer game, but it's a bit of a hidden gem, and 100% of the people we've introduced this game to have loved it because, again, it's so simple to learn the basics of the game, but it's so fun and you have interesting decisions as you play. All you do is you're trying to not get uh, points, or trying not to get the most points in this game, and uh, you can play with up to 10 people simultaneously, which is amazing and it still keeps it moving uh, so you don't have a lot of downtime, which I appreciate. All you do on your turn is you have a hand of cards and you're picking one to place down at the same time as everybody else. You place them face down, then you all flip up and reveal and they're placed out from low to high out on the grid of cards in the middle of the table. And the trick is if your card would be the sixth in a row, then you have to take the five cards that are before it and any the number of bulls on the cards are your number of points. So it's really fun because especially with a larger number of people, things will happen that you don't predict where you think, oh, I'm very safe to play this card out, but then everybody else has the cards that are right before that and they fill in the row that you thought was safe and you end up taking a bunch of points or you're saved because you thought, oh, I've got to play this card and then somebody else has to take the cards and so you have a nice clear space to play and it's great because you can play this with people who play a lot of card games or people who don't play very many. Especially kids can do just fine in this game because all you have to do is pick one card to play and there's enough luck, especially in larger player counts, that you can do okay and muddle through. But there is strategy. If you do things right, people who are able to finesse how the cards are going to be played out there will do really well at this game. So. It is a hit and they even have uh, take a number is also included in the box and that's if you want to play at lower player counts like two or three players it works better they have uh, slightly different rules for that and uh, they're just a standard go-to you need games that are quick to play but have a fair amount going on once you're playing the game and this is one of the um, standards for that and finally we have castle panic this is the game on this list that I would say has the most involved rules, but it isn't any more than Settlers of Catan. So if you can handle Settlers, then you can handle this. And again, it's not a brand new game, but they did just revamp the graphics on the box. And so it is readily available right now. And this is a co-op game in which you are bat working together to battle monsters. You have orcs, goblins, trolls all descending upon your castle and you are using your archers, knights, 
swordsmen to battle them off where depending on which ring they are surrounding your castle and depending on which color of the ring the cards correspond to both a part of the ring and a color and you get to trade cards back and forth a little bit to make it easier to battle um if they take out part of your wall you can have some if you have brick and mortar you might be able to rebuild your wall that's protecting your castle uh there are boss monsters that come out like the Goblin King, Orc Warlord, and the Troll Mage that do terrible things. They make more monsters come out or they make all of your, uh, all of the monsters on the board move a little bit closer to your castle. Uh, there are plague cards that can make you have to discard, like all of your archers that everybody's holding have to be discarded. Just fun, interesting things are happening whenever you play this game. And then whenever we play, there's always a moment where I say to everyone, okay, it's time to panic because uh, you start out and you feel like you're doing okay. And then the monsters keep coming and coming and you get one of those boss monsters and all of a sudden your board is overrun with monsters. Uh, and if you play with, you can adjust the difficulty level for this game. They have a lot of variations built into the rules for the standard box. And if you play with the base level, which was what I usually do when I play with the kids, we have a very high uh, win rate, but you can adjust that. If you want to add in more challenges, you can. They have a bunch of expansions available. If you just, this becomes your go-to game and you want to play it all the time. So this is one of those games that you can play it with kids. Kids love this game, but you can play this for an adult game night as well. And it does not feel like you are playing a little kid game. Uh, but this is just a go-to in our house. I know it's going to be a good game night whenever we play this because it is exciting, but it is positive and it is fun. We are all in it as a team. And so we just always have an absolute blast anytime we play this. So that's it for my top five family games. These are great options to gift. You are giving the gift of quality time. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time from Game Like a Mother.